So we're going to look at Adelo Express expanding possibilities. And, and I'm looking at this from the standpoint of taking this well beyond a simple point of sale system. Adelo Express was always built and with the idea in mind that it was going to be so much more than a basic point of sale system. It was going to have tremendous opportunities. The way we designed it, the way we built it, it has lived up to that. It has now become the premier product in the tablet POS system in, in, that, tent, in that market. So let's look at, first off, some of the definitions of what we're going to talk about today. So the numbers that are going to be shown are from the cloud back office software. We're going to look at something I'm, that I'm calling no known limits. I've got the initials NKL. You'll see that throughout the presentation today. And these are based on the software not having a specific limit in mind. Whereas some aspects of the software you're going to find have a specified amount or quantity. But the vast majority of what this software will do has no limits. Now, it does have the, uh, well, let's say, it, it does have some limits with respect to the RAM that's on the individual device, and that will limit the, the number of, of items or the number of employees and those things. But by increasing the RAM, you increase those possibilities. Everything I'm talking about, we, we test on a basic iPad with the 16 gigabytes. If you have a, an iPad that has more RAM than the basic, then you have the ability to go well beyond uh, what might be called normal range. So let's look, talk about a little bit of the system topography and how we designed it. It was really designed for large files and large terminal counts. We did not design this to be a two, th two three, four terminal system. We designed this to be a very large terminal account, and that has been indicative of what we, we, we found we have. The database is loaded on each terminal, so it does reside with each terminal, but that then it gives it a lot, a lot of flexibility and that we don't have to go to the cloud to get an item to then ring up. We don't send the print jobs to the cloud for them to come back to the store. Everything is loaded at the store level and it's lo loaded at the terminal level. The data that is sent to the cloud is a little small burst. It's a burst up, burst down. So it, there's a lot of traffic going back and forth, but it's very small packets. Therefore, it doesn't take long for that data to get to the cloud, have it synced, and then come back. Overall, though, the system is not cloud dependent. So if the, inter if the internet does go down, we do still operate at the store level. When the internet comes back up, there's a synchronization that goes back and forth to bring everything back to normal. But overall, the heavy lifting is done on the cloud. So when you want to do a uh, generate a range report or a movement report or any of the different reports, those are done at the cloud, therefore taking the heavy lifting to the cloud and leaving the point of sale devices to just do point of sale. So let's talk about some of the uh, limitations, if you will, or lack of with regard to hardware. So the number of tablets and handhelds that you can have in the system is 999, just short of 1,000. And to test this out on our Happy Grill database, we currently have 75 devices that are, are are live and active on that database. We're actually able to ring up in a situation where Jeff and I have played with this, where I rang up a sale in, in Florida, he recalled that order in California and closed it out there. So those types of things are possible with the infrastructure that we built regarding the, hard, the hardware. Customer displays, they are limited to one per POS, iPad POS. So if you had a thousand terminals, iPad terminals, you could have a thousand customer displays, just limited to one per iPad. With regard to kiosk, you can have 998 kiosks. You do have to have one POS, the front end POS, in order to have the kiosk. So that's why the limitation is 998. KDSs, uh, you could have up to 20. 
they are programmable and that you can actually name each one, give each one a certain name, the fry screen, the grill screen, whatever you want to name it, you have that option to name those in the back office. The same thing with remote printers. You can have up to 20 remote printers, each one of those named specifically for that where that printer is located. To go one step further, you do not have to have 20 KDS or printers. You can have 20 KDSs and 20 remote printers, giving you a total of 40 remote devices that are in the operation. Receipt printers do have a limit of one per POS. With regard now to employees, employees have really no known limit. This is one of those areas where you can have as many as you desire. So a large POS operation with uh, 50, 60 terminals, they're gonna have a lot of employees. Just know that there's no limit to the number of employees that we restrict in the system. Same thing for cashiers and servers. There is no known limit. Now, what there might be a limit, you'll hear me talk from time to time is, you generally don't have more than five servers on a single uh, terminal. Generally, three to five servers per device is the optimum for, so there's not a lot of uh, clashing of employees trying to use the terminals. That's not what we're saying here. We're let, letting you know that if you need 100 servers, you can have 100 servers. If you need uh, 100 cashiers, you can have 100 cashiers. There's no limit to the number of cashiers and servers. Same thing with drivers and kitchen help and any other staff. There's just no limit to any one of those that you need. As far as security levels go, there are five security levels, but each one of them is customizable. So you can get very, very distinct differences between the, the levels of the security in the system. There's a lot there to, to program, but there's, there's, only, there's only five levels that you can use, each one of them customizable. Pay rates per employee. There is one pay rate. It's either hourly or salary per employee. Available languages. Uh, we have five. So this, now it doesn't change everything in the terminal. It doesn't change it from a, a English to a Spanish terminal, if it, you're chosen Spanish. But there are certain characteristics, certain things in the system that do change languages, and it can be by employee. Now let's take a look at some of the software. What are the limitations of the number of items? There's no known limit. We didn't program a specific limit in here. And so you can have just as many as you want. Tested, we've tested 10,000 or more items in a, in a uh, database. And we put that 10,000 database on a very basic standard run-of-the-mill iPad. It, and it runs just fine. If you don't realize that 10,000 items is a pretty good size grocery store. So when you look at that and understand that we have a lot of items that can be put into a POS system, 10,000 or more. Prices per item is uh, we have a limit of five per one per order type, and there's five order types. But if you really get into it, there's no known limit of prices if you use the advanced pricing module. You can activate those prices on and off as you wish, but there's really no known limit for when using the advanced pricing module for the prices per item. Then let's look at menu groups. These are the these are the groups that are down the left side of the page on the items screen. These are the ones that categorize uh, different areas of the menu. And there's no known limit. You can have as many of those as you wish as well. Same thing for report categories. This is for reporting in the back office. There's no limit to the number of, of report categories that you can have. There is a limit on the number of sales taxes, and that number is three. There's also a limit on order types. In this case, we have five, and they're all programmable. So if you want to change the description of each of the five, you're able to do so. Now modifiers. There is no known limit on modifiers. Have as many as you wish. Modifier actions. This is where you do light only on the side, double, triple, 
those modifier actions, those are all programmable and there are 10 of those available to you in the system. With software, we have now the force modifiers. These are modifiers where you do the, the temperatures uh, of, a, of a stake. Those would be what's called a force modifier or a modifier group that is required before entering the item. You can have up to 10 of those, but each of those 10, there's no limit to how many modifiers you can have in each one of those groups. The advanced modifiers are the options of the sides of those things, and you can have up to eight of those. Again, each one of those with an unlimited number in those groups. Moving on to the pizza builder, we have up to 10 uh, sizes. Now we've talked about the pizza builder also being used for other things, uh, building omelets, burritos, tacos, other things beside pizza. So in this case, the 10 programmable sizes allows you to change it from a small, medium, large pizza or eight inch, 10 inch, 12 inch pizza to something like a flatbread or a six inch sub to a 12 inch sub. So you have 10 different sizes that you can use. Crust, uh, you can have, there's no known limit there. The same thing with sauces, no known limit. So you have the ability to really utilize this and modify it to then be adaptable to it, pretty much whatever you wanna do. But there's no limits to the number of, of, of uh, sauces or crust or toppings. You can have toppings that are standard toppings, toppings that are premium toppings that charge. Then there's the toppings actions that go with that. That's the double, triple uh, on the side. Those, th those different actions that you can have for a modifier. In this case, you can have 10 of those and program them as you see fit. Then there's the pizzas. How many pizzas can you have? And there's no limit. Only your imagination is the only restriction there. Then other miscellaneous software limits, uh, void reasons. You can have up to 10 and you can program the reason in, in the back office so that they pop up as a reason that they are then selected by the, uh, by the operator. Discounts and coupons, there is no limit to those. You can just keep on uh, adding discounts and coupons as you see fit. The same thing with surcharges, there are no limit there. You start to see a theme, a pattern here. Preset tenders, the, these are the ones where you have the, the $5, $10, $20, $50, $100, the different preset tenders for cash. You have up to eight of those and they are customizable. So if you don't want the, the 100, you don't have to use it. You can have uh, five, 10, 20, 25, 50, whatever denomination you wish. Those are all programmable and you have eight of those. External tenders, these are for third-party delivery systems. Uh, we have allocated 20 of these. Each one of them is programmable by the third-party uh, vendor that's going to then write their interface to our system. Suggested gratuity, this has five of these. There are five that are percent percentages and then the dollar amount that goes with that. So it would then have listed up to five choices and it would show the percentage and the uh, dollar amount. We do have a scale and that scale does come with 10 tears. Each one of those you can program in as well. Cash drawer per terminal, there's two. That's most often used at a bar. So you're gonna have a bartender with each, each of them having their own cash till. Split checks. This was a bit of a debate this morning on our call as to how many split checks we can have. And it can't turn out that you can have 99 checks on a single table. So 99 splits. Number of items on the countdown. Well, every item in the database can have its own countdown. So you really just don't limit. Uh, the only limit would be is you can have one countdown per item. If you had 10,000 items, you have 10,000 countdowns. Count All right, table management. Uh, how many tables or groups can you have? That is a section for the main section, the upstairs bar, downstairs bar, patio, whatever. 
you can have no limit to the number of sections in the system. Now, there is a physical limit to the number of tables per section only because there's a, a limited amount of space on the screen. I counted on my iPad this morning and there were 60 tables available on my iPad per section. And then customer profiles. This is how many customers you have in the system. And that answer is no limit. Looking at the inventory module, number of groups, locations, vendors, units of measure, ingredients, recipes. There's no limit to any of those. When we wrote that inventory module, we made it so it could handle, handle any restaurant or bar or a combination thereof. So Mesa, that is the back office now, or I'm sorry, the Mesa app, either a browser extension or the Apple app or the Android app, whichever the, whatever your customer needs, there are no limits to the number of users. They, there is no limit to the number of uh, customers that can use that uh, app to ring up. There's also no limit on how many gift cards are issued, whether those be plastic or digital. There's no limit there. And along that same line, no limit on the number of loyalty programs that you can run. So you can have multiple different programs running it simultaneously within the system, and there's no limit to the number of apps and, and customers that can be lo loaded into those and be using them simultaneously. Remember, both gift card and loyalty are both multiple store programs. So a chain of stores can use these. So let's come back and just kind of wrap this up with the definitions page again. The one I want to make sure that you understand is that, yes, there are some limitations based upon the amount of RAM, but you have now the ability within the, the purchase of an iPad to go well beyond the 16 gigs. So if you find that you're going to have max number of items, number of employees, you're going to max out on all these different areas. You may have to get a bigger iPad as far as memory goes. But what we've tested so far on our 16 gig uh, iPads is that you're not going to have a problem. So what about questions? If I've been seeing some come across, but I didn't keep up with them. 